It's the only time I do it live. Up to this, we record it and put it on YouTube. All right. Ready? Go. Yep. Once upon a time, alongside a river, there lived a miller, a man who would grind wheat to turn it into flour to make bread. Now, this miller had three sons. And when he died, he left his millstone to the eldest son, the donkey that would carry the flour to market to his middle son, and to his youngest son he left a cat. A cat! A cat! said the youngest son. What am I going to do with a cat? I suppose I can skin it and use its fur to make some mittens and then I can eat the meat for about a day and then I'll be dead. But this was no ordinary cat. It said, oh, master, please, uh, listen, perhaps I can help you. And rather than eat me, uh, you can follow my instructions. He said, uh, what I need is a pair of boots and a bag or a sack with a string around its neck. What did he have to lose? So the young son got the cat a pair of boots and a sack with a string around its neck. Well, the cat went out and lay down in the field and spread some lettuce around the bag. And then he lay there and pretended dead. And some very young, stupid rabbits came nibbling away. Pulled the sack closer and closer and closer and then got it around the rabbit's neck and snap! Broke its neck. And took the rabbit to the young master who said, Oh, we'll have something to eat. But the cat said, Oh, no, 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 no. I've got a better idea. Let me take the cat, let me take the rabbit to the king and give it to him as a present. And I shall say, you are the Marquis of Carabas sending him a gift. And that's what the, the cat did. Went to the king and said, the Marquis of Carabas wishes to present the king with a fat, juicy rabbit. And the king said, oh, I haven't heard of this Marquis of Carabas before, but uh, yes, I'm always uh, happy to eat a fat, juicy rabbit. Well, a couple of days later, the cat has the bag and it's lying out in the field again and it spreads some grains of wheat and who should come looking for some grains of wheat to eat but a fat chicken. Peck, 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 peck. And it got closer and then snap! The cat grabbed it in the bag, broke its neck and took it back to the master. Oh, please, can we eat this one? No, no, no. Let me take it to the king and say it's a present from the Marquis of Carabas. Which he did. He took it to the king and said, a present from the Marquis of Carabas. Oh, this Marquis of Carabas is a very kind fellow, said the king. Now, in those days, the king would go travelling through his kingdom and visit all of the peasants and the farmers and all the people that lived in his kingdom. Now, Puss in Boots said, Now, young master, what you must do when the king's carriage passes by, say, Help, help, someone has stolen the clothes of the Marquis of Carabas. And the king's carriage came passing by. The young master threw his clothes into a bush and jumped into the river and screamed out, Help, help, someone has stolen the clothes of the Marquis of Carabas. Well, the king stopped his carriage and said, I know that name. That man's been sending me food. Quickly, go and help him. And he sent down some servants with some clothes and, and brought him up and put him in the carriage and sat him down next to the princess. Because, of course, the king always travels through the kingdom with the princess. And then they went further and further into the kingdom. Now, Puss in Boots was racing ahead of the carriage. And... Each time he came to a field, he would say to the peasants, when the king's carriage pass, passes by, you must say these fields belong to the Marquis of Carabas. And that's what happened. 
when the king came through the fields, he said, who do these fields belong to? Oh, they belong to the Marquis of Carabas. Oh, you must be a wealthy man, he said. Finally, Puss in Boots reached the very end of the kingdom where there lived the most horrid, horrid ogre who had teeth like razor blades and would eat anyone who came near. Now, Puss in Boots went in and said, Oh, great ogre, oh, um, um, before you eat me, there is, um, there's something I've always wanted to know. Is it true that you have such magical powers that you can turn yourself into any animal? Yes, of course there is. I am all powerful. So, can you turn yourself into a lion? And in an instant, rah, terrible lion. Puss in Boots was so afraid he jumped up on the roof and he's in his boots sliding about and he falls back on the ground and then says, oh, that was terrible. You, it can't be true. You can't transform yourself into any animal. Of course I can. Name one. Can you turn yourself into a mouse? Yes. And in an instant, here I am, see, I've turned myself into a mouse. Well, Puss in Boots lashed out with his paw, grabbed the mouse, ate it, and that was the end of the ogre. Just in time for the king's carriage to come through the gates of the castle. Who does this palace belong to, said the king. And Puss in Boots said, why, it belongs to the Marquis of Carabas. Oh, you are such a wealthy man. Please marry my daughter. And so the young master married the princess. They lived happily ever after. And Puss in Boots tried not to eat mice, but cats will be cats. That's the end.